Hello, I'm Dr. David Brady, Chief Medical Officer of Diagnostic Solutions Lab, here with another clinical minute for providers on how to interpret modern methodology laboratory reports. We're going to talk a little bit about H. pylori. Some people are confused because they see H. pylori reported in what they consider is quite often on a GI map test. In fact, we usually hit on some level of H. pylori up to 40 or 50 percent of the time. And this is consistent with the world literature. So that if you go on and do a PubMed search, you'll find that in all the meta-analyses out there, the global prevalence of some level of H. pylori, if you can look with a sensitive enough methodology like qPCR, is about 50%. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone has ulcers or everyone has a elevated cancer risk. In fact, H. pylori at low levels, there's literature suggesting that it can provide some immune tolerance and balance and cause less prevalence of reactive airway disease and asthma and eczema and other types of immune dysregulatory disorders. So we choose to um, actually report out the H. pylori we find. And if the probes hit it, it's there. You as the clinician then now have to contextualize that data. You have to look at the level found, paying attention to the exponent in the scientific notation, compare it to the reference range, but also we provide genetic characteristics to produce virulence factors. These are the metabolites that can actually cause erosion of the gastric and duodenal mucosa and lining. And with clinical symptoms, contextualizing your case and virulence factor and quantitative information, you then can make the decision, does it need treatment or not?